Hello and welcome to Gothic Reviews. Today we are reviewing the Monster Cafe BBC series that was aired from 94 to 95. And uh, the series was uh, very cute, uh, although maybe not as intended for children as Martisha said. Um, I didn't even realize it was supposed to be intended for children. We discovered it when we wondered why it was cancelled and it was apparently because it frightened the kitties. And I know kids watched The Addams Family and The Monsters and weren't afraid, and I don't see this as any worse, and it's a little bit, like, I guess, cuter, but um, not, not to the point of silly. I think it was still for adults. I considered it adult, and I do watch cartoons for kids, and I've read books for kids, like Harry Potter, Diana Wynne Jones books, etc. Um, and I think a lot of books intended for children are still enjoyed by adults, and they're not too kiddified, I guess is the word. You know, they still have depth, and you can still enjoy them no matter what age you are. But I, I don't even think that about this cartoon. I just thought it was more of an adult cartoon. But again, like the monsters or the... Why did I say cartoon? That's not a cartoon. Uh, I guess well, it's because... it's a cartoon series, I guess. Well, it's, it's not, though. It's not animated. Well, it could have been. They're actors. It had the flair. <laughs> well, I guess I said cartoon because, um, about kids. Like, it's yeah. a show for kids and you usually think cartoon. But it's not a cartoon. So again, that's actually another reason I was surprised that they were saying it was for kids. So it's not a cartoon. Kind of like a Monsters Adams Family thing, but not exactly a family. That's the neat part about it. Um, it's more a group of friends, and they work in the Monster Cafe, obviously. Um, but before we get into that little summary, it, back to what I was saying, that um, I didn't even see it as for kids. I could see like where the Monsters and the Adams Family are family friendly. You know, like your kids might not get all the innuendos and comments, but they can watch it and not be like scarred for life or whatever. So I would think the same thing about the Monster Cafe that. Um, I wouldn't call it a kid's show, but I wouldn't send my kid out of the room if I was watching it or whatever. Um, so again, since it wasn't a cartoon, it did seem to have adult um, themes of understanding and playing on words and whatnot, um, good humor. I am surprised that it was geared toward kids, um, or really that it scared kids, because I, I thought it was charming. I wouldn't say scary. I mean, Monster High is huge, so... Yeah, I agree with that. They're just cute monsters, and it seems like if uh, children have access to a horror movies these days, that yeah, are... but they don't call it for kids. They don't say Friday the Thirteenth Part Four for children. Yeah, <laughs> Freddy for kids. It's called Enter Sandman. Go to sleep, bitches. <laughs> that would be precious. Primetime shows. <laughs> So when, when, when it's not the holidays and you don't have Krampus to scare the crap out of your kids, there is horror movies for children. Be good, or Freddy will stick you in your sleep. <laughs> but kids do seem to adore Freddy, isn't it strange? It like... is! Um, one year, Gomez and I dressed up as Freddy and his twin sister, which is um, actually um, characters in a book that we're writing. Um, the kids were just so happy to see us, and I was thinking, wow, he usually kills kids, so that's interesting. Well, okay. Hi, kitties. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the Monster Cafe, if you haven't seen it, um, there's some shows on YouTube that we will link. They're not, I don't think, in a row or anything, but they're good, and they show you what the series is like. There's, like, I think seven episodes or nine. Um, we'll put the link down. And I discovered it from this really awesome YouTube channel that I found. Um, the Shrouded Hand. He just has neat, spooky, kind of paranormal stuff on his channel, and it's really fun to watch. And I think this was his intro, and someone asked what the song was, because it's a very, it's one of those um, shows that have a really good theme song with words and stuff. And he said it was from an old BBC show called The Monster Cafe, and I was like, okay, I love the song, and I have to check this out. I have to watch this and experience this, and it's just excellent. And I would like to buy the whole series, but I can't find it. And I cannot find it for sale anywhere, so if anyone knows where to get it, or... It, I don't know, sometimes things are really expensive and sometimes they're dirt cheap, it just depends. If anybody knows where one is dirt cheap in UK and wants to do a swap or something, I'm there. Um, whatever you're looking for, you tell me and you'll get it, especially if you want something from the US that's harder for you to acquire. Of a decent, you know, fair, similar price, I will make sure you have it. Because we can't find it online anywhere. Um, so yeah. But what the series is about is these monsters and they all work at the Monster Cafe and each one has its own little personality and they're run by the 
um, evil Baroness, what is her name, something long? The Monstro. The Monstro, yeah. <laughs> um, she's obviously like a female Victor Frankenstein, and I kind of like the fact that they make her a villain, because in the Mary Shelley book, I see Victor Frankenstein as the villain, not his creation. And so I really like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, it's funny though, in our book, we give Frank, um, that's the creation of Victor, later a wife with red hair, and uh, Baroness de Montreux has red hair, so I was like, oh my gosh, this is like funny. <laughs> so, yeah. But she's, she's like a villain, but you don't really hate her. You're just like, oh, you're not being nice. But, you know, she's not like... Yeah, she, she might be petty, but also likable. She's not truly evil. She just wants her goals to be met. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't really try to like, hurt them that much or whatever, like... No, just a regular boss abuse. Yeah, just a typical boss. <laughs> and there's her creation, uh, Frankie, and because of the fact that she is a woman, her creation is a woman. So it's like, you know, the Frankenstein creation. Where Victor was a man, so was his creation. The creation is female, as is the Baroness instead of the Baron, because Victor Frankenstein was a Baron, not a doctor. So, um, yeah, she's cute. Her name's Frankie. And then there's the mummy. Who they call Mummy. <laughs> Mummy. <laughs> and he is, um, I guess he doesn't really speak very well, but they all seem to understand him, so it's kind of cute. He seems smart, even though, like, uh, other people wouldn't get that because he doesn't speak well. But he has a, a charming character. And then there's Igor, who is a tall Igor. Looks different than the little hunchbacks you expect, which is nice. And he is the cook, the talented cook. Yes, he has a charming personality. I'm used to seeing Igor's being a little smaller in stature. This one is a very tall Igor and like almost broad shouldered and everything. So he is definitely a neat character. He kind of reminds me a little bit uh, in a very strange way of Oleg from uh, the two girls. What was that? Two broke girls. Two broke girls, yeah. Not was, it better still be on. We're just behind. Yeah, I just don't know if it's cancelled or not, like, because... We get so behind in our shows because we get busy and it's like, oh god, we're not watching and ah... Uh. We have to get it on Netflix or something. I yes. Guess. I really like that show. Yes. So, um, it's, it's one of those non-spooky ones that we watch, but it's just really funny. So, it's on CBS, Two Brook Girls. You've probably all heard of Two Brook Girls. If you haven't, check it out. It's funny. Yes. And another, I think, underappreciated character a little bit. For me, he stood out also, Vinny the Bean. He is like a trash can sort of thing, but he is like a dog. But he's not exactly like a dog either. He's more like a monster dog the way a monster is supposed to be, so he's really adorable. It's like a trash can with teeth. Yes. It's really cool. He would be a fun action figure. All those would have been good action figures to have. Um, then there were some characters that pop in and out that are really funny. They have a lot of side characters that you probably only see for that episode, but they're really good characterizations as well. Um, the plots are cute, they're engaging, the episodes are only 15 minutes long, so it's kind of good when you're busy and on the go and have stuff to do, and you can just watch one at a time as you go, and not have to dedicate too much time to a show, but the plots are so well written that in 15 minutes, I think they can still make a lot happen. Yeah, I agree. Well, maybe I have to mention also this uh, skeleton, because, uh, skull, who can forget a skull, you know, like we, we would consider I think they him. call him Scully, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Or Skull. He's like our Yorick, but he has this little high voice when he talks, which is kind of funny. Yes, he's so adorable, he cracks up good jokes, and he sounds uh, just the kind of tone that I would have imagined for him, like if he were a character, so it's like really nice. I think he's more on the Baroness's side, or else he's just too afraid not to be. But he's not directly mean. Uh, no, he's more like, I guess his jokes don't always uh, fall the right way and stuff, but uh, he is always trying at least, and he always uh, entertains himself and us in process, so... <laughs> yeah, I forgot about him. So, yeah, it's got some neat characters, it's got some good side characters, it's got cute plots. Um, did you read anything else online? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, there is that interesting bit uh, about Isabel Middleton, who plays Frankie. Uh, she really delivers monsters well, and the other famous character that she played, to my surprise, was Trelawney uh, Sibyl. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You... I totally wouldn't have known. Like, she looks way different as the little female uh, creation Frankenstein. I, I totally didn't know she was Trelawney. Yeah. Well, I guess she was older, too. Yeah. Yeah. That would help. And, not to know. And you know, like, I, I wouldn't have, like, I looked at several of her images, but to me, she always looks most animated, most excited when she's playing some kind of a monster or an oddball. Like, for some reason, her personality really shines through. Well, uh, the same with Dwight, Far uh, Dwight Fry as Renfield in the 1931 Dracula. Yes. He didn't always want to play the, 
the monsters of the madman but he did the best at those yes and uh what else there was also uh our igor i think no, it wasn't Igor. It was another character that we haven't met yet that also played in the Prince Dracula that we recently watched, uh, the one where he was cursed and stuff like that, where there was like the... what was it called? Dark Prince Dracula, that's the official title. So, like, they had a few, several, like, uh, strong characters. Uh, the character who played the Baroness, she came up with this interesting concept that I really liked of uh, not the regular clown, but the dark clown where he is not trying to make you laugh, he is forced to entertain you whether he likes it or not, that he has been through hard experiences and he wants to share them with you and you don't really know if you should laugh or not. And to me that is a more realistic portrayal of the clowns, the way where they were done in mythology that was seen. That's interesting because you said dark instead of evil. Yeah. And I think there's a big difference because of people being scared of clowns, it's not that kind. Yeah. I agree. So it was interesting. Uh, also, where does the dark clown come in? Uh, that's uh, the concept that she, the actors developed. I just thought that it was interesting. Well, where did she develop it for? Uh, she developed it for theater because she is a theater actor, Peter Lily. So she played all kinds of strange performances, oh, nice. and she specialized specifically in clowns. But I just thought that it was so interesting. Like that is interesting. she seems so whimsical in the show, but here in reality, she's like all serious and stuff. So it's kind of cool. Yes, it's a good. Um, portrayal when an actress can show so many sides. Yes. So if you guys haven't heard of the show, you should definitely check it out. If you're watching this channel, I'm sure you're somewhat into things like that. And I think it's a very charming show and that you would enjoy it, at least the free episodes on YouTube that we will provide you. And um, like I said, they're short and nice. And um, it's interesting. We thought it was even from the 70s and I was kind of surprised it was from 94. Yeah. I was too. So, Slappy says that he hopes you enjoyed his review. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all about him and his house. He thinks it's always him. <laughs> and he wants you to try and to enjoy the daylight and dream about him because he's always... <laughs> <laughs>